Hello. Hello, everyone. How do I uh, how do I see the questions again? Because that was there last time. It's not there. Okay. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the uh, to the I One Masterclass. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Very excited to share with you some some great stuff and, and tips and tricks on how to get the best photos out there with the I One. Uh, we've uh, we've had the I One now out for for over a month and. And we're starting to see some really cool pictures that we wanted to basically share with you all the little tips and tricks and, and, and ways to get great photographs out of this because at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's what you got the camera for. So I wanted to split the, the class into two sections. One is about getting the most out of automatic mode. Um, and the other one is a little bit more advanced and talks more about um, the app and, and, and all the all the cool stuff you can do with that, uh, focusing a little bit more on the manual mode of the app, which is, uh, I think, one of the coolest things about this camera, and, and in my opinion, the coolest thing about this camera, because it gives you the full control of, of your image, which is something that no other camera uh, can do. So I wanted to start up with just some real basics. Uh, we need to charge this camera, uh, which is different from old Polaroid cameras, because we have the battery in here. Um, It'll go through like 15, 20 packs of film on a full charge, but the standby time is, is not great. And the reason for that is the battery needs to be at a really high voltage to provide power for the flash because this is uh, a high power LED flash. There's no capacitor, so it's directly linked to the battery. All it means is you need to kind of charge your, your camera before you, you want to use it with a flash. Um, and, and as long as you do that, you can get great shots. So. Um, the red light here will tell you if you're fully charged, it will be on. If you need to charge to get the flash working, that will start blinking. Um, just turned off because it fell asleep. Uh, and uh, when this is off, obviously, the camera is off. But the camera will continue to take pictures once the, the power is too low to use the flash. And the reason for that is we figured if you're on a trip um, and you, you know your basics and you're only going to shoot in the daylight, you can still take a bunch of always recommend to shoot with the flash because the more light you have in your picture the better it will be the sharper it will be um, so that's kind of just the basics you can check the battery level really quick by just turning off the camera pressing that it'll tell you how much battery you got left um, so the first thing in automatic mode to, to think about is framing so for that you use the viewfinder obviously uh, and it's got uh, a dot and a circle and the first thing you want to do when you're framing is hold it, I don't know, about 20 centimeters away and just align the dot in the circle. And then you kind of bring it forward and in until you're roughly almost touching it with your chin. That's about where it's, it's the most precise. And at that point, the dot and the, the dot's going to be blurry, but you can still tell whether it's in the circle or not. It's kind of like, it's different than a rangefinder, but basically you've, you've got your idea of where it is. And as long as you keep it aligned, you're going to be pointing in the same direction as the camera. And, uh, and you're going to be really close to, to that frame. The other thing that's really important is parallax. So the, the viewfinder actually sits above the lens. So when you're looking through here, the camera is looking down here. So the closer you are, the closer your subject is, the more you need to correct for that. After like about a meter, you should just be looking directly through this thing. Um, Um, but when you're closer than a meter, you should always kind of correct and go up a little bit to, to, to correct for that. Because again, the, re the reason for that is very simple. It just sits above it, which is a common viewfinder thing. On a Polaroid camera, you're to the left. On the I1, you're above. So you're central, but you're not, um, you're not there for, for up and down, and you need to correct a little bit. So once you've got your subject framed, um, the big thing is, is how to get the perfect sharp shot and how to get the most out of the autofocus system in the camera. And um, the way you use the autofocus system is you use the, the trigger button. And it's got two positions, like a standard camera. And it, they're a little bit light, so I'd always recommend to just turn the camera off and get a feel for it. So you can feel distinct two clicks. It's quite soft, but once you click it in to the first position, you'll definitely feel it. And then the second position. And once If it's off, you, know, you won't waste any pictures, and you'll just get a feel for it. So once you do that, um, you can turn the camera on, 
And the way it works is it's using infrared ranging. So you can actually see, you can actually see the red lights, uh, the infrared emitters firing every time you press it. You can just see that right there. And what it's doing is it's just firing that infrared out and then checking how much comes in. So when you have an object in front of it, it gets a lot back. It focuses up to that close object. The thing about it is it really relies on, on centering your subject on focusing. So if I want to focus on my, on, if I want to take a picture of the tips of my fingers, for example, so something, so I'm actually, you know, just have my tips of my fingers in the, in the frame, the camera is actually going to focus past my hand. So the way to avoid that is you actually aim at the center of my hand, focus, and then reframe the image up. So that will, that will mean that it's actually focused on here because at the moment of, of focusing, you've got the, the subject filling up as much of your frame as possible. It needs to fill about 70% to get, to get the right thing. So when you're actually focusing on a person, that means aiming a little bit lower so that you know, if you have a small head on a big frame, it doesn't like, you know, focus on the background. That's kind of the key thing to, to always get a sharp shot. So the other thing about this camera is that it, it works in zones. So it has five focus zones. Uh, one for, for, for each kind of distance. And uh, each one of those zones has a sweet spot where the picture is super, super sharp. So in the sweet spot of each lens, we're basically as sharp as an SLR. And this is particularly important in low light situations where we need to use bigger open apertures, which means uh, ultimately the lenses have these, these pronounced sweet spots where they're super sharp in one. And then as you trail off to the sides of the sweet spots, you're kind of more close to a 600 than a SLR and you can get an acceptable image, but it's just not super sharp. So I thought one of the things to share here would be where those super sharp spots are. Um, so we're gonna take a bunch of pictures and I'll show around portraits, portraits with shoulders, groups of people and stuff like that. So I have my uh, lovely assistant Hattie here with me. Hey. So she'll help me um, show you some stuff and we'll take some pictures. Um, so the first one is the, is the closest the camera can go, which is roughly 30 centimeters. And, uh, and that's the macro lens, lens one. And uh, that's about this kind of crop where you can just see the whole, the whole face. So we'll take a picture like that first. So again, I would aim a little bit lower um, while I'm focusing. And then go up. And again, at the super close distance, it's good to kind of just go slightly up for, 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 the, for the portrait um, so that exactly what I see in the viewfinder is what I get here. Um, we took some shots earlier. Over here. Yeah, they're right over here. So that's roughly, so I'm going to show you everything we shoot live and I'll also show you, um, I'll also show you some stuff that we did earlier. So basically, the macro lens is, is the strongest around exactly this, this kind of area where you get a very close portrait. Um, and that's roughly 40 centimeters. So anything that you're going to shoot in 40 centimeters, whether it's low light or not, in automatic mode is going to be super sharp. And it looks roughly this distance. Um, here's another one with that distance. They're all a patty. <laughs> so don't be, don't be surprised. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's basically lens one, and it's super easy to, um, to focus on that one as well because it's just the closest. When you're that close, the camera pretty much never makes a mistake. Um, and it always just goes to that. Um, the next one is, is a kind of a portrait that goes up from, from the shoulders, and that's about 80 centimeters. Um, so again, I, I go this. So again, you would aim a little bit low first, kind of at the center of the body. For focus, and then you go up and take the shot. So that would be uh, the, the sharpest points of the, of the close-up lens, which is uh, the kind of the portrait from here to here. And again, everything that you kind of shoot in that range should be super, super sharp. And the whole like point of this again is the further, um, the brighter it is in the scene, the less this stuff matters because the camera will use a smaller aperture for the uh, for taking the photo and the smaller the aperture the sharper the shot but we have to time out the shutter speed at some point which means uh 
which prevents handshake. And this is actually something that we can think about for the app as a, as a future update. If you guys actually think that uh, having the camera not time out at a 30th of a second would be more useful to you because you understand that you can't hold it in your hand then, which is kind of how an SX70 works. If you cover the, lens, the, the light meter, it will just stay open um, and make a longer exposure. We could actually implement that in the firmware of this camera and have you guys update it if you want, maybe even through the app. Um, but currently what it does is it limits a 30th, a 30th of a second. Um, so if it's too dark, it's just going to open that aperture all the way up in automatic mode. Um, so it's, it's basically around here, but it's actually even slightly closer. I was a little bit further away. So it's kind of in between this distance and this distance where you're going to get the sharpest results from the second lens. But again, we're shooting here at, you know, it's, it's indoors. It's not super bright, but it's definitely bright enough to, to kind of close that aperture and get some really sharp results. Um, but these are the kind of distances that you're looking at for, for that second lens. Um, and again, if you're centering your subject, uh, it will uh, focus on, on that. And then the next one is, is a little bit further away. It's kind of for, for a group. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing about lens, too, the, the, the close-up lens is it's the, the, perfect selfie, uh, the perfect selfie lens. It happened to be so. Um, it's actually, if you outstretch your hand, uh, if you outstretch your left hand and you trigger the thumb, um, you can do one for good measure. Uh, you will you will get the perfect selfie. Um, I have a lot of those. Um, and impossible. Um, but yeah, it's 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 also a, a, an easy way to kind of see what the camera is doing. If you actually look at it and, and focus it, you can see the lens moving, and you can see it move to a different one when you get far enough away and you outstretch your hand. So you can kind of learn what the camera's thinking. Um, the next one is 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 the is the near. Uh, zone. It's actually the most capable lens of the whole camera. It covers the whole zone once it's on a small aperture. Uh, but in low light conditions, it kind of works the best around 1.8 meters, which is another big step further away from, from, from lens two, which is the close-up lens. So you can take a photo of that distance. Let's go under here. That's so roughly here. And when the camera goes to lens three, it actually doesn't make when the camera goes to lens three, it actually doesn't make any sound because it stays on its on its uh, on its axis. It stays on that selection of the lens. So when you when you focus and you don't hear anything, that means you're on lens. Like nothing's moving. It's not that it's broken. It's that, and it's not that it doesn't work. It's that it's actually places your subject at about 1.5, 1.8 meters, and uh, and it's going to take that shot there. And actually, when you go outside and it's super bright. Uh, we limited the camera so it only stays on lens 3 with a small aperture if it's bright enough. And that way there's no possible focusing errors. When it's super bright, it'll always be sharp and we'll always kind of use lens 3 at that small aperture. That's why it's the, it's the most capable lens. And again, if you're outside in bright sunlight and it's, you don't hear it moving, that's not that it's broken. It's just using a very small aperture. Um, these are all things that can be overridden with the app if you want to you know, do something different, but it kind of guarantees the highest number of sharp shots out there. So yeah, it's roughly this kind of distance. Here's one we earlier. So that's kind of your distance for lens three. So you can fit in like five people <laughs> in there if you if you really want to. Um, and this is the selfie from from one minute ago. So then we kind of get to the to the further lenses. Again they're um, they're kind of more rare to, to, to use because when you're taking stuff of, uh, when you're taking pictures of things that are further away, you're usually outside, it's super bright and we're gonna go to lens three anyway. But we have them for the kind of lower light conditions inside of a huge group of people. You wanna take a group of 15 people or something like that. It's gonna be lens four and that's really sharp at three and a half meters roughly. 3.3, uh, 3.5 meters. Uh, and then lens five is actually for the infinity distance shots. So they're really far, the mountain or something like that. If you're in low light and we can't use a really small aperture, we go to lens five, and uh, and that will cover you from six meters to infinity or something like this. And that is basically the focusing, uh, the, the the basics of focusing. And uh, I mean, the, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys know a lot about this in photography, but the key thing is is, is kind of knowing light and, and having a lot of light in your in your photos and having light behind you rather than in front of you, which makes the biggest difference to me on any camera, whether it's the i1 or the SX70 or anything, 
knowing light and, and shooting with light is kind of, well, I mean, it's photography, so <laughs> I guess you guys know that, but I, it's just something that I think it's always worth telling anybody getting into this. Most of it is about light and all the other stuff kind of helps, but as long as you have good light, you're gonna have great photos. Um, so now I wanted to actually uh, take some questions about automatic and, and, and how to get the best results and stuff in, in, in that area. Um, while we set up for some manual shots, we're gonna do some light painting and stuff like that because we can do that in our little studio environment here and I can show you some, some ideas for manual mode and that kind of world. Um, so if I can open up the, if I manage to figure out how to open up the chat thing. One second. Q and A. All right, so I'm just gonna, I just need to read some of these for a second. So, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go through them as fast as I possibly can. Um, okay, so the first one is about charging um, and why it has to be charged often. So it comes down to basically maintaining the super, super high voltage for, on the battery for, for providing the flash. Um, if it's anything more, if it's at all more often than three days, then there's definitely something wrong. Um, and, and, and you should definitely get a replacement from us. But it, we're clocking at about three days, um, which is kind of closer to a, to a phone or something like that. Uh, and we do definitely realize that. But to really give that power to the flash, we need to maintain a high voltage. And it does need to be charged every, every three days or so. The good news is you can get through like 15 or 20 packs after a charge. But, um, but the standby time doesn't mean you need to charge it once in a while. So the viewfinder. So are there any plans for another type of viewfinder? Actually, yes, we are um, looking at a, a couple of options. The easiest one is actually using these lenses and putting this pipe over it. It's something we really wanted to avoid for, uh, for a lot of reasons. But um, I think it, it, at the cost of being a pipe at the top of the camera, it definitely gives you that kind of more precise frame, um, actually. Yeah, so we are looking at another type of viewfinder. It's actually like the, the simplest one to do and the quickest one we could do would be like a pipe that actually gives you the, the more precise frame because some people do uh, have a little bit of difficulty to get the precise framing and, and, and to use this one the most precise way, it's all about the alignment of the dots. Uh, it's all about, um, which is actually like the most important thing because as soon as that dot is slightly misaligned, it's not perfectly in the center, then that means that you think that it's in the center, but it's not, so that's that's kind of the, the, the best way to to do it. Uh, is kind of focus on the dot and, and, and the right kind of distance from your eye. I'm having a little trouble with the exposure correction. Outdoors when it's very bright, one stopped often isn't, isn't, isn't enough. Is this the color film? Because I'm having less trouble to get the exposure right with the black and white film. Yeah, so our color film and our black and white film are really similar in exposure. They're different in kind of nature. The, the, um, the contrast is super high on the black and white one. Um, and I guess it, it also responds slightly different to, to a lot of light. Um, we could look into giving it like a bigger down step or just generally bringing down the outdoor, um, the outdoor performance in terms of super bright shots a little bit less bright um, as a firmware update for those who, 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 who prefer it. If we're gonna look around and, and we're gonna look at all the data and it looks like, yes, it is too bright, we can definitely lower that down with the firmware update or with the, with the app as well. Okay. Related to focus, when I use the app with the i1, many times the picks are out of focus. I'm using a tripod even though I'm sure that the dot and the circle are in the right position. How can I fix this? Um, so I guess it, it kind of depends if you're using the manual mode where you actually pick the focus yourself and then you need to just roughly know where you are, whether it's you know 0.5 to 0.8 or, 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 or whatever. Uh, or if you're using automatic, which would kind of uh, mean that you, you, you want to you want your subject to take up as much of the space as possible in the frame. Um, 
in general, when you're using the app and you're using a tripod and you have the luxury of that, the really key thing is to just use a smaller aperture. But I guess I'll, I'll get to that in, uh, in the more advanced part after we, we go through the, the automatic. Uh, let me see. When are we getting the Android app? The Android app is coming uh, September or sooner. We're working really hard to get that out as soon as possible because we realize like some of the coolest things you can do with this camera are on the app. So we definitely want to get the Android app out as soon as possible. We're probably also going to be doing a public beta for some testing and getting you guys uh, involved early to give some feedback. So yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be probably latest August for the public beta. So. We'll keep you posted. Is the firmware of the i1 camera upgradable uh, via the app or PC? Yeah, so it's upgradable through a PC app that we haven't released yet because we don't have a firmware update to offer yet. Um, it's currently not upgradable with the app, but it is upgradable with the PC once we have a, a, an update to show. But there's a lot we can do with the app without upgrading the firmware as well. Regarding, okay, I think, manual mode, manual mode with double exposure. Yes, that's, that's going to happen. So yes, we're going, we're working on a manual mode with double exposure for you or triple exposure, anything like that. That's been asked for a lot. So we're definitely going to put that in as soon as possible. Sorry, just reading through all these questions. Some of them are just doubles. So here's one about focusing. I've experimented with focusing on a subject, then moving to a wider shot. Any suggestions on this? Or how about bringing, being able to choose which lens to use in the app? So you can definitely do that on manual mode. Um, we could put a mode in there where you can actually use an automatic exposure, but with selecting the lens that you want on, on the app itself, that's actually quite easy. Um, regarding experimenting with focusing on a subject and then moving to a wider shot, um, I mean, it, it depends. It all depends. Like, basically, the key point is to have your subject in the center, and the key point is to um, have that while you're focusing. So again, like you just point more at the body, and then you go up, and then um, that means that the camera focuses on the thing that takes up the biggest part of the frame. What happens to a film that doesn't eject when the battery is flat or low? Does film still have an exposed image inside? Um, the, you shouldn't be able to take a picture when the battery is low enough for it not to be able to eject. If that's the case right now, then we'll have a look uh, at your camera for you. But basically, if it's too low to eject, it shouldn't be able to take a picture. Um, I1 only uses its internal battery. Yes, so the I1 only uses its internal battery, and it's located in the door here, which is a pretty small space. Um, so yeah, so this lets us get away from from the from the the battery and the phone pack. Okay, I think I think that's about all the questions. Uh, I have time for for the for the autofocus stuff, and we can show you some really cool. Um, light painting uh, ideas and, and, and generally talk about manual mode on the app. Um, so I think we're going to turn off the lights for this. Hope we have all the blinds. Cool. So I've got a dark studio. I think you guys can still see me. Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do a light painting with the light painting mode which is kind of designed for a really, really dark room. We have a, a room here which is a little bit 
uh, brighter now because we're in the middle of summer and even though it's evening, it's still, it's still a bit bright here. Um, but uh, we can show you how that works. It basically uh, defaults to a distance of about 1.5, 1.8 meters. It's going to be, sh you know, when you're doing light trails and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter so much if you're a little bit off of that. But if you want to be super sharp, if you're standing really still or something like that, and then you're painting over that, that's the distance you want to be at, which is roughly two meters. Um, and uh, we have a camera set up there. So we're just going to take a shot and then show you and, and kind of walk you through that. And then show some more features and stuff you can do with light painting. So Hattie's going to do the first one. I hope you can, you can see. <laughs> you can see her in the total darkness. Um, so she's standing about a meter and a half away, two meters away from the camera. I did a little bit through there. And, uh, and she's just going to draw a shape. So you, you can go ahead. So we're going to open the app and then trigger the shutter button and then use the flashlight to actually draw the shape. And the flashlight is right in the app, um, right in the same screen where you actually trigger it from. You ready? So this is we're talking about this. We're talking about this part of the app. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do one now. So that's kind of the super, super simple um, light painting, which is more than anything meant to get you started and uh, trying to figure out how this, how the light works and how to get the, 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 the stuff working. Um, and then like one thing to be said is the modes are ways to kind of learn and interact with this, with these techniques, but all of them are actually composed of manual settings and modes. So once you kind of understand that, then you can use manual mode to create any of these. Um, so the picture that Hattie took looks like this. And uh, the more the more light is that's already in the room, the more you're going to see her behind the, the, the actual writing. If you do it in a pitch black room, the only light that's going to be coming onto the scene is from the flashlight. Um, so you will only see the writing unless you actually point the flashlight at yourself and, and, and illuminate yourself. Um, so what we wanted to do now is actually use manual mode to do a light painting which gives you a lot more control. And the idea uh, that we're going to show is, is you can actually kind of freeze yourself as the subject behind the writing in a really, really sharp way. Um, and that'll let you kind of create a composition where you're both in the shot and you're actually writing. So what, you, what we're going to use for that is actually a, a studio flash that's going to flash once um, to freeze Hattie in space in the photo, in the photograph. Um, but you can actually get this to work with just like a, a standard household lamp or something and you just flash flash it on and then flash it off um, and then you do the light painting. So you'll see what I mean when you do it. Um, so I'm going to go over to the lamp over there and I'll show you. Show so I'll show you now. I'll, first of all, I'll actually, it's probably better that I show you the settings I'm using. So I'm going into manual mode. I'm going to put the aperture at f32. So I want the aperture to be really small because there's actually light in this room already. Uh, I'm going to set the exposure time to about four seconds. And I know that she's about uh, roughly two meters away. So I'm going to go for, for lens three there, which is the, the one that, that works best about two meters away. And we're going to turn the flash off. And then I'm going to walk over. I'm going to trigger that exposure. And then I'm going to flash Patty, uh, with the, and then let her do the light painting uh, on top of the kind of flashed image of her herself. So here we go. Ready? Three, two. So we'll do this one, and then we'll do one more at F64. Um, so that it should be even darker. So we go.
Cool. So, uh, here are the two photos we took. We took a bunch earlier as well, so you can see some, some various examples of this. But basically, it makes, it makes your subject super sharp behind all the light painting. So, here is the first one we just took. So you can see she's, how do we get this? Uh, so you can see she's super, super sharp, but at the same time, you can actually have light painting around it. This is on F64, so this should be the darker one of the two. And you can tell, you can tell that it's darker. But the thing to really tell about these photos is that she's super, super sharp. And the reason for that is we're using a super, super small aperture. And I think it's, it's something that obviously, most photographers know about and, and, and use is a small aperture means a sharp image. But I think it means so much more in instant photography. Um, the way Polaroid cameras get great results is they have a super powerful flash that lets them use a small aperture. And the I1 in that way isn't so different. And in manual mode, you can kind of tap into that. So any situation you have to get the camera stabilized and, and let you use a slightly longer exposure time means you can actually get super, super sharp images in a variety of um, in a variety variety of, of situations, whether it's a still life or it's a it's a building or, or anything else. So um, yeah, these are developing. I can show you a few more. Maybe we can turn the light on for a second. I can do this without the flashlight. So yeah, so this is how these guys look. So you can see the F sixty four is on the left, and the F thirty two is on the right. And then I think I have some other examples from before. Sounds really cool. Moody. That we did before with the heart. And uh, and yeah, this just this idea of freezing your subject in, in, in the photograph in time uh, is what I think is a really cool technique for, for different light painting and stuff like that. And this one's coming out, the F64 one's coming out super cool. The other thing you can do with that idea is kind of freeze the subject in different uh, in different positions. Um, so I think it, it, it all kind of comes down to the idea of playing with light and like um, recording stuff with light and kind of burning that onto the film. So we'll do just one quick one with uh, two different poses in the same photograph just being flashed with the light. Um, so again, I'm going to use exactly the same settings as I had before, which is F64, which seems to work really well, four seconds, and uh, yeah, I'm going to use the, the flash to just um, light up the scene twice, in two, and Hattie's going to do two different poses. Okay, ready? First one. Flip the lights on, I think that's a better idea. So basically, uh, I can show you some, well, this develops, I can show you some earlier ones as well. Um, this is kind of an, it's not a double exposure, but because you're in a dark room and you can control the light, you can actually kind of make it work like a double exposure. Um, so this is the new one, and this is one we did earlier. Actually, I don't even look at it. Yeah, so it's really cool. It's just hard to tell that she's kind of standing right in the same position. One is with the head down and one is with the head up. So I think we'll upload all these photos up onto this uh, or, or Facebook group or something like that so you can see kind of all the results and you can really check out what you can do. Um, and again, this is kind of all confined to this little studio. So we figured light painting is the easiest way to get across some, some, some cool stuff. But all of this works in, in all conditions, outside, inside, um, in, in whatever situations you are. We have some really amazing photos from, uh, from Danny, um, from Danny here at our office. He went to Norway the other day, and, uh, and he actually made some long exposures of, uh, of, of water. So... Uh, so these are some amazing pictures of fjords. So these are long exposures taken at midnight. Uh, and you can see the water turns smooth, but the rocks stay sharp. And this is, this is kind of the idea of using small apertures and longer exposures to, to, to get really cool, cool effects and really sharp images, which is the, the cool thing. 
Um, OK, I'm going to take a few more questions uh, about that, uh, about all the stuff that we've just done. If, if you guys have some more, let me just get, get these photos away. Cool. Uh, okay, questions. Does anybody have any questions uh, about the app? Okay, there we go. What about adding an aperture or shutter priority on the app? Yeah, we're, we're definitely looking into that. Um, we can definitely do that, and uh, I think we're gonna. What we're gonna. What we can do is we're we're kind of in the position now to to list all the different things we've been getting requests for, and just let you guys vote on the different ones you want because we need to create the roadmap. We definitely want to support the app and and and, and give more features, and I think it would be super useful to hear your feedback and and just vote on on, on the different features that you want. We're definitely uh, working on some stuff. We're working on the Apple Watch support. Um, we're working on the Android app, and we're working on some features like double exposure with manual uh, controls and stuff like that. Yeah. Can you trigger studio flashes with the i1? Uh, the answer is not yet. Uh, it's another thing that we want to look into as fast as we can, which is a little kind of adapter that would let you trigger studio flashes. Um, again, that would kind of only work with manual mode because the camera wouldn't know how to calculate for that. Um, but yeah, it's something that's kind of on the roadmap a little bit further down. When using the app in manual mode, I would like to be able to shoot using the shutter, not the camera, after I lay the settings down. The shutter on the camera. Holding the camera and pressing the button on the phone is really cumbersome. Yeah, uh, totally hear you. and I. Think we can we can manage to 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 do that. Um, it's also something that we've been hearing a bunch internally, and, and and think we can manage to put in. Can you give us uh, some insight onto what up updates are planned? So this is what I said earlier. We're definitely uh, working on some updates, but I think uh, the best way to do that is actually just show you um, kind of a list of the different features we're thinking of, and have you guys kind of like the ones that you, you want the most. Why does a f the flash not work when the battery is 3 out of 8, but the flash mode is on? Um, the reason is we don't have the voltage high enough to actually fire the flash, but we still figured, since we have enough battery to take a bunch of pictures, it would be better to leave that on as a, as a feature for if you kind of are on an extended trip, but you know that you can shoot in the daylight. When you have a flash, we figured that would be more useful than just having it completely die. I'm going to guess no, since this could ruin the magic. But do you see the camera app or future versions ever syncing over the image, like a live view to the phone and Android? Um, well, you can't actually do that, because this is, this is an analog camera, right? So it doesn't have a digital camera to, to beam back the image to preview it. Um, and this is something that I have considered a lot to actually put a digital camera on here and have the live view, but it absolutely would, like exactly like you say, it would ruin the magic of actually giving you some kind of pause and thought before you press the trigger, not after. If you have that live preview, you can take a million pictures, which is exactly what your iPhone is great for. But this idea here is more about kind of thinking about whether you really want that shot and then pressing the trigger after that. Uh, getting a, a lot of likes, so I'm going to answer it. When will you guys give us 10 photos instead of 8 photos? Very popular question. If we ever make our film thinner, which is possible three, four, or five years down the line, then we could squeeze in 10 photos in the pack. But right now, we unfortunately can't because the film chemistry is just too fat. And in transport, the pods would break um, when we put 10 in the pack. Uh, My exposures are not accurate. Inside with the flash, they are too dark. Outside, they are too bright. So I mean, I guess I would have to see your photos to really, to really help you. But the main point is the flash will work great for groups of up to kind of three people. And then it kind of drops off a little bit uh, when, it's really, when it's really dark inside. 
Um, and again, it kind of also depends on, on the focusing. So as long as you're kind of focused and all of that, the, the, the exposure should be, should be completely fine. And on the outside, outside when it's super, super bright, you put it to down. Um, most of the time that will be enough. And if, if we observe that it's a little bit too bright, we could uh, think about dropping that aperture with a firmware update or something like that. All right. Uh, can we choose a preset in the app that can, we can see the parameters change in the manual settings? If we choose a preset in the app, can we see those parameters change in the manual settings? I don't fully understand that question. If you want to rephrase that, I'd be happy to answer that. Okay, there's a question that's kind of more specific. Does she draw and then press the shoot button? Um, kind of depends on which, which time you're talking about. The one where we, we use the studio flash, I actually first, first I open the shutter of the camera, then I flash the studio flash to kind of freeze her in time, and then she actually uses a flashlight to paint. On the other one, where you're using the light painting feature itself, you open the shutter with the button, then you use the flash uh, on your phone directly in the app, draw, and then you close the, the shutter directly on the app itself. So you can see that on the, on the app. Can we get the logs off the app a little bit easier in the next update, please? Uh, could you explain what you mean by get the logs off the app? Do you mean save them somehow or export them into a, into a little text file or something like that? Do I have to focus manually when in manual mode? Yes, uh, you do. We decided to keep it that way because each of the five lenses have slightly different apertures, and we figured that kind of full control over that would be better um, than not than you know just the auto focus. But then it kind of changes your aperture, so you set something up in the ballpark, but it's a little bit off. And we figured if you have the full control, you're fully in control of your shot, which would be better. For the pictures with the water, I'm assuming it would be f32 with how long exposure, four seconds, 30 seconds. We can definitely answer that for you later. Danny took a shot, so I'm sure he remembers the settings. Uh, but yeah, it would be f32 or f64, moonlight, um, between four and 10 seconds or something like that. OK. The ocean's photos were done with a flash. No, the ocean photos were done with no flash. It was just a long exposure in the middle of the night. Um, with like moon illumination, which is really, really cool, and a, and a small aperture. Is there an iOS app in the works? Yes, the iOS app is already out. That's, that's the only one we have. If you mean the Android app, it is in the works, and it will come in September. Uh, or earlier, we're pushing for earlier. OK, I think a lot of the questions are, are kind of the same questions I've already answered at this point. Um, there's another feature that I forgot to mention uh, on automatic mode, which is actually you could get double or triple or quadruple exposures with the camera on, on automatic mode. Um, so the way you do that is you actually keep your keep your uh, finger on the shutter button after you take the after you take the uh, after you take the image. So you can take one again with Hati just to show you. She's still around here, chilling. So if we take two photos, so I'll take one photo, and then uh, I'll take a second photo um, on the same film. So the way you do that, let's take the first one. So I'm keeping my finger on the shutter button pressed in. And then I turn the camera off and then let go so the camera doesn't eject. I turn the camera back on. You see still hasn't ejected. And then I can take the second photo. And if I keep my finger on it, it would actually let me take a third one if I turned it off and on, but I only want two exposures, so I'm going to do that. So I'll show you how that works. So yeah, so you actually don't need the app for the double exposures. You can do it here. Um, it's better. Um, it's better to to go in the minus, which I obviously didn't this time, but I think it's still going to work pretty cool. OK, some more questions. Uh, when focusing with the I1, 
sometimes I don't get an actual change in focus sound, the motor sound of the focus actually shifting. Should I always hear that sound, or does it just mean the autofocus is set to infinity? So the answer is, if it doesn't move, it's on the kind of uh, 1.5 range, 1.5 meters is roughly where you should be. Or if you're outside in, this, in the light, it means it's kind of focused on everything because the aperture we're using is super low. Um, so if it doesn't make a sound, it's fine. Like, it means that you're on the zone that's about 1.5, 1.8 meters is the, is the sharp spot um, around uh, there. So you can actually, you can actually see that if you, if you do, if you kind of point your camera at yourself and keep focusing it and moving it away, um, it'll move less when you get far enough away. And then kind of when you point it up above you, it'll usually go to lens three because it's kind of catching part of your face in there and it won't move. So it's fine if it doesn't move. Um, it means that it's in that range. So this is the image that we took with the automatic mode double exposure. <laughs> okay, I think I saw a really good question about... Can you use SX70 mode using the manual mode exposing for ISO 100? Absolutely. You can do anything you can imagine with the manual mode that a camera can. I mean, I think that's the exciting part that we're really bringing to the table here is, yes, you can put SX70 film and meter for ISO 100. Um, you can do kind of anything you, you, you want. Uh, and I think the exciting thing in terms of an instant camera is being able to actually go to those low apertures and, and, and get really, really sharp images if you if you're using uh, if you're not hand holding it and you can lay it down or put it on a tripod. Uh, there we go. Danny has your answer for how to get the uh, smooth water picture. So it's 0.8 and 2.5 seconds between 0.8 and 2.5 seconds, and the apertures were 32 and 64, no flash. It's actually really short exposures. There's a lot of moonlight there. Will there be a holder for filters? Maybe something for Koken filters. Not, um, not currently planned yet, but I think it's quite easy to, to fashion something. Like the key thing is you can't really cover the flash with the filter. So you, can, you should only cover the lens or the whole thing with the flash will also get, uh, get tinted. Having in mind that this camera is so exposed, why is it so hard to get the case? We've had a little bit of a delay on the case. The case is coming. Uh, trust me, the case is coming. I might have missed this, but is there a way to know you have set the correct exposure in manual? That's a good question. So if you wanna, if you want the the camera to auto uh, to tell you how to what the exposure is. We're actually getting the information from the light meter. Um, so what I can do is maybe if we can open the blinds again, get some more light in here, because I think we're not going to do any more light painting. Um, so if I connect to the app again, to the camera again, actually, this is a different camera. Okay, so basically this, uh, this, this screen is, is the manual screen and, and right, I can't really hold the camera, one second. So, so the light meter reading is right here compared to the, the settings that you have. So my, app, my, my time is here. If I move the time to about so now I moved closer. If I move the time to about a thirtieth, oh, and I and I open the aperture a bit, it will it will jump to the to the so now it's moving so it's closer to the center. I'm kind of moving my hand in front of the camera right now. So if I just point it at something stable, you basically want the yellow pit to be in the center. And if you need to open the aperture, um, see that went up now. 
And if you close the aperture, that goes down now because we have a high time selected. So basically, and we, we actually have an update coming that should make this more precise because we've been having um, some dodgy um, reading sometimes. So we want to make that precise. You can also use a free light meter app on, that's available on the phone, which is going to meter exactly the same way, uh, but from your phone's camera rather from the light meter in the camera. Can you show us the battery level now that you've taken a few shots? Yes. Sorry, there we go. So it's six. The key thing with, uh, wait, where's the question? The question ran away with the, with the battery, but the question was, can you show us the battery level after a few shots? It really does last 15 to 20 packs after the full charge during that day. So the key point is the standby time isn't as good as uh, as we want it to be in terms of you know many many days, but it it once you've charged it you can go for 15 20 packs and it will keep taking the photos. If it if it doesn't then there might be something wrong with the battery and we need to to replace that camera for you. So oh yeah there's the question. So I can do it with the question. So we're at six out of eight. Um, oh yeah and and if you have kind of more serious issues with the battery than, than, than that, you should write to service at the Impossible Project and we'll definitely sort it out for you. Okay. I note your model is wearing a dark shirt. Does autofocus work as well with dark shirt as it would with a lighter shirt? Um, it does have an impact. It should be small. Uh, white obviously reflects much more than black, um, but it's kind of in the range of, 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 uh, of acceptability. Um, if your subject's wearing bar dark, it's even more important to just aim a little bit lower at the center of the body while you're focusing. Okay. Uh, what else? Is there a plan to make a folding SLR in the future, maybe with some aperture speed controls? There's a lot of dreams, Edgar. There's a lot of dreams, but it's very difficult to actually engineer something like the SX70 um, and have it work properly and, and, and all the rest of it. So we're kind of, it's, 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 in, a, it's in a longer time frame, uh, but we are always thinking about the perfect photographer's camera with manual controls and, and, and whether it folds or not, but definitely SLR. Um, we're definitely thinking about that kind of stuff, but nothing planned for, for right now in the immediate future. So cool on the auto mode double exposure, great stuff. Can you do four or five exposures? Yes, you can like, you can keep doing this trick like over and over and over again, um, but you're gonna need to kind of, if you wanna do more than two or three, um, you're gonna need to kind of adapt to your scene because you're gonna get too much light in, so you can only get, you know, a third of a stop or something here. So this is the image that we took earlier, it's looking better now. Regarding the logs question, as in have a login to Dropbox so they automatically save log entries and not having to screen grab the logs at the moment. <sighs> Dropbox integration, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't think we, we can manage that one uh, for, for, for keeping logs, but we'll keep it in mind. Be cool if you guys could add a PC socket to the next iteration of impossible cameras to allow for greater flash photography options. Noted. Yeah, I think uh, working with some external flashes could be really cool. Okay, I think uh, I think I kind of got most of the, the the questions about actually getting great results. If you if you have any questions about how to get um, kind of better, greater, sharper uh, results or anything like that or any kind of issues with creative techniques or anything that you guys want, um, definitely write them here. I think this is the, the, the moment to, to go for those kind of questions. When you talk about a new feature, I'm talking about app features only. So these are all upgradable for the people who already have the cameras. And also when I'm talking about a firmware update, this is also 
compatible with all cameras that are already out there and you already have it. It's not like it's going to happen in the new cameras. Ah, there's the question. Can you state the optimal focus ranges again? Didn't catch all that. So we're going to actually publish that stuff uh, in a simple kind of infographic way. So that's out there and you can really just always have it. But it's basically uh, 0.4 meters, so 40 centimeters for, for the macro lens. It's about 75 or 0.8 meters, 80 centimeters for the close-up uh, lens, which is lens two. And then for the next one, it's all the way out at 1.8 meters uh, for, the, for lens three, which is the near lens. Then for the next one, it's all the way out at 3.3 .3 meters. Uh, that's for lens four. And then for lens five, it's kind of anything over the five meters is, is good. OK, I think, I think that's basically most of the questions about uh, most of the questions about the, the app and how to and the camera about how to get good results. I'm, uh, I'm definitely open to answer any questions in terms of getting results out of the camera. reading through some more questions. More questions about accessories. We're definitely looking at some accessories. The biggest one coming is the bag and the straps and, and, and all the rest of that. Um, there's a question about pre-flash that just whizzed by here. All these are kind of moving around. Um, I think it's a question from Ray about whether we're going to, um, it's something we specifically left off because we thought it would be annoying, but yeah, to reduce red eye, you could do a pre-flash. Um, it's something that could be available in a firmware update um, as an option um, one day if people are, are asking for it. But we ran some tests and it wasn't making a huge difference and we decided to leave it off. Ah, there's the question. It would be more of kind of a, a, a thing that we could do on, on on demand if enough people are, are, are really asking for it, but it's something we decided not to do. Shout out to the Impossible Customer Service. Thank you very much. I'll let the guys know that they're amazing. And yeah, I think uh, on that note, I think those are kind of the main, I've answered most of the questions and I'll post all the photos that we took here and kind of short descriptions about how we got them. Uh, so you can you can try that for yourself, and uh, I think we can we can wrap up here. If you guys have any last second questions about how to get really cool results and and, and create photographs out of this, I'd be happy to answer them. But I think yeah, in terms of the the other stuff, I think we've covered everything. And uh, thank you very, very much for coming. And uh, hope you guys get great results and, and post everything up and, and, and then let us know if you're having, um, if you're having issues and, and, and we'll, we'll definitely help out with getting the best results possible. Oh, one thing I really wanted to, to ask you guys for is to submit your photos to Project A. So anybody with the, the i1 has this envelope inside. Um, and you just shoot a photo for with, to one of these eight briefs that are that are listed in in, in the box as well, uh, and we're doing like this really big um, photo swap for for this project. We have some really cool uh, photographers and some really cool uh, artists and musicians involved in, in the project, and we really want these physical photos to kind of fly around the world and, and be part of this big exhibition. So, if any of you guys have a great shot you want to share. Uh, or shoot to one of the briefs specifically, you can send that in for free in the envelope that's provided in the i1 box. And I'd love to see some more. Uh, we've, we're starting to, to get more and more entries as we only launched uh, a couple weeks ago, but uh, it would be great if you guys could uh, submit your shots, shot on the i1 uh, for Project 8. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thanks so much for supporting the Impossible Project. And uh, good night, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Thanks. Bye.